Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 34 of Darwell20's Let's Play Ocean Block series, where today I'm getting ready to turn on, I hope, my nuclear reactor. Are you not getting water anymore? Explain what's going on over here. Is it a power situation problem, or what? What's the dealio? What is the problemo? It might be a power problem. We might be having a minor power issue here that I need to resolve. Minor, minor things that need to be resolved today. Uh, oh my goodness, that is right. I am underwater and that's bad. Uh, you and you. You know, you don't play the game for a little bit and then you forget all the things. Let's give you a dedicated connection here because you know what? Water's pretty important for not having a nuclear meltdown. So... I'm gonna give you a priority of 11, right? Because didn't I give, uh, now I'm gonna have to remind myself, but I'm pretty sure I gave my, this dude over here a priority of 10, is that right? Is this what the priority is? Yes, 10. So you know what, instead of 11, I'm gonna give it 20. And there's a reason to do this. And if you're in if you're in a technical field at all, you kind of know, but it's kind of like planning for the future. Um, People who do like networking or, or IT related work do this a lot. Um, so by setting it to 10 and 20, we now have basically numbers 11 through 19 that we can use in case there's something that we want to be less important than this water, but still more important than our refined storage system for some reason. Um, so long story short, I, I, that's probably a good idea, right? Yeah, it's not going to be terrible. Oh, right, I still, I took, I need to, I need, I need a jetpack, which is also underwater safe. That's all I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. That's, that would be lovely. Uh, so this dude is still limited to 10,000 transfer. Uh, remember last episode, I think it was, we did that. And the reason we did that was because these machines were just drawing way too much power, and our current power gen system, which we have right here, uh, was incapable of supplying enough energy to keep them all running at all times. But luckily we have a net something, maybe lost, maybe gain, I don't know. Are you still running? You are. You are. Ethylene's cool. Everybody's groovy. You should probably get void upgrades, because I feel like we're about to backstuff this guy, aren't we? I feel like we're about to backstop this guy. There you go, crisis averted. <laughs> um, and actually, surprisingly, potatoes are getting a little bit low. But I think we're going to be okay. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. I think your power gen... Does your power gen drop if, you're, if the amount of ethylene we have in there is low? I don't actually know the answer to that question. Uh, I guess-ish... Let me get some of you guys and probably some energy upgrades. And let me do like, that-ish. Does that sound cool? And maybe you'll get a little bit more ethylene coming in. Yeah, I like that. And what if we helped you along a little bit? Just to, you know, just to, you know, and I think the more ethylene in the gas burning generator, the more efficiently it runs, so the more energy it produces. So even though I didn't tick accelerate the gas burning generator, we just got it more ethylene, he's producing more RF a tick now, and that's probably good. Um, now, if we really, if we wanted to bump that guy up to eight, are you gonna have a problem with hydrogen or are you gonna be cool? No, you're gonna have a problem with biofuel though. All right, looks like we're gonna have to uh, speed upgrade all the things. Uh, give me like 32 of these, just to have a bunch. I feel like that's a good time. Um, and today's episode we're going to properly turn on the reactor. So, while this is going to be nice to have enabled and sped up, uh, I, I, you know, we're going to absolutely want... It's debatable if this is all useful at all, to be honest with you. I don't even know if it's worth speeding this up because we're gonna, we're about to enable the mechanism reactor, and then once we get that thing turned on, uh, it's gonna be a whole nother ball game, right? Uh, what I should probably do is have a flux plug and point ready uh, for the generators network that I usually have, 
So let's have a flux point and a flux plug ready. The point is going to dump energy in, and what I'm gonna do is configure this guy on the right to be red. So that should be cool. And we're gonna put our point here, and he is, and you know what I'm gonna do just to be, eh, I'll probably just leave it as is. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, we're gonna set up a new network called generators. And power gen is going to happen here. Security, public, create. Perfect. And you're going to be on the generators network. Awesome. Uh, and you're going to disable the limit. And you're just going to transfer as much as you want. All the things. And that should be cool. Sweet. All right, good times. Um, you might need a little bit of help. I'm just going to put like four of each in these guys and see how that works out. Now the problem obviously is I can't take Excel, well I can't mechanism, you know, speed upgrade the potato stuff. But we'll figure out if that becomes a problem or not. And if hydrogen becomes a problem, we can also do that. Which, as a reminder, these things usually get a little bit power pricey, right? I just made that 2,500, you know, a lot of RF a tick. But yeah, it'll be fine. I'm not going to sweat it. Anyway, let's get the mechanism steam reactor turned on today because that's going to be a huge deal for us. Uh, so priority one is I really want this thing to be full of water before I kickstart anything because I have a feeling it's going to use a healthy amount. Let's recap what we did. Last episode, we set up an automated uh, system here which will turn on and off the reactor uh, when I push these buttons or when the temperature goes off the scale. So once high temperature hits, boom, it should deactivate the reactor. So this thing is currently disabled, but I should make him activation mode. Um, and what should now happen is this guy will, you know, activate the reactor when I push this button. And when I push this button, it'll turn off the reactor. Or when the heat goes out of control, high temperature, uh, it'll turn off the reactor. That's kind of the plan. The other thing we should probably plan for and be ready to handle uh, would be nuclear waste. So how do we want to do nuclear waste? Uh, there's a few ways, obviously. We could build an underwater structure uh, for containing the nuclear waste, which I think is a thing, right? Is that how real life works? Where, like, you know, you store nuclear waste underwater? I think so. Something, something, water inhibits something? I don't know. I'm not really sure. It might not be nuclear waste that gets stored underwater. It might, it might be the, the fuel rods are kept underwater because it... I don't know. The point is, we're probably going to wind up putting it under water because we're in an ocean world and we don't have much other choice. Okay? I don't have... There's nothing else I can do. There's just water everywhere. So, that's what's going to happen. I'm just debating whether or not that's a thing that happens in real life. Uh, underwater, do I want to build, like, a waste containment facility? Because that could be kind of cool. It, it could. Um, you know, maybe a giant underwater room that uh, all the nuclear waste containers go into. Uh, and then remember, though, that we want to process the nuclear waste that we're going to get. And to remind myself that we need to do that, I put everything in JEI. <laughs> smart, smart dyer. I remembered. So remember, nuclear waste is produced by the fission reactor. So once we start producing power between fissile fuel and water, we're going to be producing a ton of steam and nuclear waste. But that nuclear waste can be turned into plutonium with an isotopic centrifuge or polonium with a solar neutron reactor. And each of these can be turned into uh, something else. So plutonium uh, can be turned into plutonium pellets and we're gonna get spent nuclear waste. This is the stuff that we need to store. This is the stuff that needs to be stored. Uh, and those plutonium pellets can be turned into SPS casings, which are nice, uh, or they can be reprocessed into fissile fragments, which will get us more fissile fuel. So if we're having a problem creating nuclear fuel, we could go the plutonium route, and it's also how we're going to get the SPS casing, which is part of that multi-block that makes antimatter, right? Option two, polonium um, will be used with fluorite dust to make polonium pellets and spend nuclear waste. And the polonium pellets make all kinds of cool things, and it looks like there's some draconic fusion stuff that is going to be in our future, right? If I wanted to get a creative energy cube, that's cool. That's kind of cool. A little bit OP. A little bit OP. Um, I'll, among all the fun, all the fun, uh, mecha suit body armor stuff. So my plan for body armor, by the way, is I'd like to start with mechanism body armor, play with that a little bit, because that's, like, attainable now, and then 
migrate over to draconic armor, right? Because we know that draconic armor is going to be bananas. So let's let's set up first. Let's be well. A couple things. I'm debating how what order of operations I want to do here. But high level, what I need to do is number one, uh, handle spent nuclear waste. With both an isotropic centrifuge and a solar neutron react activator, probably like I did in my Let's Play series with a lever. Where, like, you know, flip a lever and it all of a sudden, uh, you know, turns on one and turns off the other kind of deal. Uh, and then, in addition, we're going to have to handle the spent nuclear waste. So we need to be handling that. Remember, if you break a tube that has nuclear waste in it, it's going to irradiate the area and that's a bad time. So we want to avoid that. Uh, number two, that's also super duper important here. Uh, <clears throat> we're probably going to want another one of these fission reactor ports. So let me get one of those because we might need a couple of those, to be honest with you. Let's get a few of these bad boys because uh, the reason the reason we're going to want these pretty straightforward. Uh, we need to transfer the steam that's being produced in here into this dude. And we're going to have to see if I want to do that with the with the Tesseract or with the Quantum Entangloper or what the deal is going to be. Because uh, I remember Quantums, I'm pretty sure, have an infinite transfer speed. Um, I, I like the idea of using cables and tubes, but also I feel like if I use cables and tubes, it's not going to be fast enough. But we could try and see how it goes, and then if it's not fast enough, switch to Tesseract. Does that sound cool? Whoop. Hey, good, we're full. All right, well, let's get ready to turn this bad boy on. Uh, so my plug here, Flux Plug, is going to go into the Generators Network. That'll be a good time. Cool. And, uh, yeah, we're going to disable the limit on transfer, so you can transfer as much as you want. The plug will send energy to the network. So that'll be a good deal. We also need to have a giant battery to store all this. Again, we're going to start with the mechanism multi-block and then migrate to the draconic energy sphere. Um, but let's get some pressurized tubes for the steam because I'm pretty sure steam is a gas, right? I mean, in, in real life it is, but you never know. Minecraft things are sometimes different things. And then we want to... I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, the turbine vents is where the water comes out from the reactor. Um, yes. So let's start with one line of each, and then we'll see what happens, okay? So who's ready to turn on the reactor? I think I am. So let's get ready. Activate. Oh boy, things are happening. We're building up nuclear waste, so that's good. Temperature's climbing. Uh, you have no steam? What's going on with steam? Do we have to wait until temperature hits a certain point? What's the deal here? What am I doing? Something seems wrong. Uh, no, you're producing energy. Oh, cool. Steam input. Nice. We have steam. Sweet. And we have water going back in. Is that is that a good deal? Dumping excess is on. I think we're producing RF. Yeah, production. 2.17 thousand RF a tick. That's cool. Now, the one thing I'll note is this is loud. Uh, this is loud. Mechanism... Rotary condensator? Fission reactor. We'll do it like that. How's that? Is that cool? So our temperature is pretty stable. I guess we're cool here? I guess we're cool here? Steam input? Are we transferring enough? Like, what's the deal? Why do I feel like... I guess we're transferring it fast enough? And we're not losing water, so that's good. So I guess everything's cool? Why do I feel like that's not a lot of RF a tick? I mean, steam... I don't know. How's my... this thing? I always get nervous with the nuclear reactor, because I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna derp, right? Like, we know that's a thing that's gonna happen. I think with dumping excess on, we're cool in terms of power. I wouldn't mind turning this thing off when we don't need more power, but also, meh. We're about to build, like, a massive energy store, right? So that'll be a thing. Now, I wouldn't mind testing, like, the overheating thing. So just for funsies, steam builds up in the heated coolant tank? Wow, that's a lot of steam, right? I guess so.
Wow, this thing must have a large capacity for storage. Why do I remember, like, the steam just, like, instantly filling up in the fission reactors? Why do I feel like this was, like, a way crazier thing that happened? Oh, is it the rate limit? Oh, it's the rate limit. That's why. That's why it's the rate limit. It's the rate limit. I forgot about that component of uh, mechanism. Because I want to set the rate limit, right? 0.2 millibuckets per tick? 374? 0.5 millibuckets per tick? All right, we're getting somewhere, 377. And then you're gonna what? Produce more steam? And you're gonna do more RF a tick. Now I'm remembering, now I'm remembering one millibucket per tick? I don't remember, so the max burn rate is 52 millibuckets per tick. But we wanna watch our temperature, right? Five mill, five, okay. I mean, at five millibuckets per tick, we're producing 114,000 RF a tick. <laughs> I remember this, now I remember. Uh, eight? At what point do we, like, get worried about heat? I guess we'll know when we know. 11? I know I did this in, like, my Let's Play series. And we're building up a lot of nuclear waste, by the way. I'm kind of, like, purposely pressing this as far as it can go. Because I want to see what happens when it overheats. I would like to see the temperature go a little bananas. Oh my goodness, look at this, 1.14 million RF a tick. That's a thing. Wow. So our water is decreasing at this point. Now can I make you higher? No, so the max is still 52. But water is decreasing at this point. You might have an overflow of water or like, you know, what's the dealio? Let's do this. Just in case. I'm just curious if this will fill up the water. Like, get us water back faster. It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be. Did it turn off? <gasps> it turned off! Yay! We fixed it. It works. It's scrammed. Look. It overheated and it turned off nice status disabled the the thing triggered it did what it was supposed to do awesome well that's neato all right so let's set you back to like 0 0.1 for now because like we don't need a massive amount of power right so i'm setting you back to 0 0.1 i think we need to wait for it to cool down um and what's that what's that mechanism thingy that tells me like if there's radiation oh boy what's happening hey it should not be irradiated. We should not have irradiated nothing. I had the reactor automatically turn off. It even triggered. Okay, well, today we learned I did not do a good job of the radiation thing. I, but it, but I did the thing. It, the, it, the redstone was on. The redstone was on. I'm very grumpy about that, I want you to know. Because I should not have died there. Alright, what's that mechanism measure the... The thing with the stuff. And we might need a radiation suit. We might need a radiation suit. Yet another bunch of gear we're going to need. And we need our, our curio glasses. Uh, so radiation suit. Uh, or, yeah, mechanism. What's that? Is it a Geiger counter? Yeah, that guy. This is why we built it far away, guys. This is why we did the thing. And then, what's the mechanism radiation suit look like? Hazmat, 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 hazmat. Yes. Hazmat. 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 And hazmat. Pew. Pew. Now, how am I going to get over there? I don't know. We'll figure it out. If I right-click you, no. No. What in the what? What is this? The reactor was off. I am very not happy. 
Explain. Somebody explain. I need to now go look at the footage to see how and why that blew up. Because the redstone signal was on, so it should have turned off the reactor as soon as it hit a high temperature. All right, so I'm looking at the footage, because I recorded this whole thing without any interruptions. We had like over 20 million water inside the reactor, and then like all of a sudden it was all gone. Like, if you watch what happened a minute ago, like, scroll back in the video if you don't believe me. Like, it was going down slowly. We had, like, over 20 million. I turned around, I looked at my turbine, and then I turned back around and I looked at my reactor, and all the water was instantly gone. But also, the redstone signal triggered, which means it should have turned off the reactor before it got too hot. Um, and, and then it just started doing damage and, and hurting me. So I'm not sure what happened there. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I restored from backup because now I need to understand why this happened because I have no idea why this happened. It really shouldn't have as far as I understand it. Um, so my coolant tank is almost back and filled up. When I when the last backup, the coolant tank wasn't all the way full. So I just had to, you know, and, and do a couple things like I reset up this. Basically, everything I did in the last, you know, 20 minutes of this episode uh, was since my last backup. So I had to redo a lot of that stuff, but I did it all off camera. Uh, and everything should be back and groovy now. We'll see. Uh, Fissile fuel, you're doing pretty cool. Nice. All right. So let me let me let me try turning this on again. So again, we're gonna hit this button, which should turn on the reactor. And I think I had set you fission reactor. Oh, that's not part of the world save, so we're good there. Uh, cool. So now you're running. You're producing steam. Everybody's groovy. Now, we don't really need more than the steam that we're producing already, right? Like, we're pretty good with 0 0.1. Uh, but let me bump it up to something like 30 real quick. And before I do that, let's let's turn you off. So yes, that absolutely turns off the reactor, right? So something happened to the water in here, and I don't know what. It, like, flash boiled or something. Because uh, it literally just all immediately turned into, like, steam. I don't know what happened. Something overloaded somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if it's intended or if it's... I, I honestly don't know. I have no clue. I couldn't tell you why. But we're going to figure it out together. So let me do a quick backup. Starting a manual backup. Done. Okay. <laughs> I have a backup of this point. So I have to redo all the work I did. Uh, again, so let's activate the reactor and set you to something relatively high but still reasonable, like 33. So 33, you seem pretty stable in terms of temperatures. 45, nice and hot. Now, are you net losing water? You're still net gaining on water, so you're still pretty cool. You're still pretty good. I have to look back at my, like, Let's Play series. Now, you're also set to dumping excess, which is good because we want to dump excess here, right? You're going to build up your internal buffer of power. Maybe it's once this thing's buffer hits max? Was that the problem, maybe? Once this thing's buffer hits max here, I'm going to, once it gets close, because I thought dumping excess should have handled that, but now I'm thinking back to, like, my, my Let's Play series, and maybe I need an energy trash can. That could be a thing that we need. So you're still okay on water. Let's cut you back to like 20, 22 ish. I want to see this thing's energy buffer fill up. And then I'm also going to be ready to energy trash can you if needed. Okay, deal. I think that should be fine. So you're not going anywhere, ish. Oh, here goes the water, yes. And then he should scram. Sweet, he scrammed, cool. Now here's where the problem comes in. Um, yeah, you're not dumping excess. So what if I did this? And now you're getting all your water back and you're cooling off nice and good. And your damage is at 25. Okay, so there's where the problem was. There's where the problem was. Okay. Um, okay. So let's do this. But still, my understanding is the, 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 the heat sensor should have triggered it, but maybe it was too fast. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick an energy trash can here 
with a flux plug on the generators network. But we're going to set the priority to negative 100. Does that sound like it would work? Okay. So now, unlimited. Limited, unlimited. Okay, cool. So now what should happen, look at you filling back up with water. Is this like all water that's like in here still or something? I don't know. Where'd all the water go? Did it flash boil? Ah, uh, beats me. I just work here. But yeah, so like I think for now we can just set it to like one millibucket per tick because that should be more than enough. But what should happen now is if we activate you, and this should be fine because um, we have it on such a low... See, we're still net gaining on water, so we're good. Okay, you're going to be set to flow rate and production and all that. You're making around 22,000 RF a tick. So, like, you're outputting all 22,000, and you're receiving pretty darn close to that. But see how it's fluctuating? Because some of it's going into the generator. Okay, cool. So now let's deactivate you. I should really only ever activate this with this. I should never hit the activate button in the UI. I remember that now. Um, and then as water comes in, the damage number is going down. Looking back at the video, I think what happened is the, the temperature was super high. We didn't have any enough water going in there. So the damage was climbing, and once it hit 100% damage, uh, it has a potential to explode. So I think that's what happened. I'm just still not sure why this thing wasn't like a good enough failsafe. Because I thought it should be. All right. Well, you know. Crisis averted. Ish. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why that didn't work. I'm still not sure. Like, this is bugging me that this didn't fail safe properly. Like, it wasn't a fast enough fail safe. I guess the temperature went up way too fast, and it just couldn't... It was too fast of a temperature change for this thing to, to catch it, I guess. Is there some other measure that I can do? Excess waste, damage critical, insufficient fuel? Nope. High temperature is it. I would like... What would be nice is if, like, a low coolant number, like, if, if, if the water went below 20%, it would trigger the turnoff so that it would, so that the temperature wouldn't go up, but we would catch it before the water got too low. That would be nice. That would be nice. Okay, so at least this thing's running, so that's good. What should be my next important task? Because uh, there's two important things I need to do now. Handle the nuclear waste, of which we have a lot, uh, and store energy. So let's do giant battery for mechanism. Does that sound good? Giant mechanism battery sound cool? I like that plan. Uh, let's get that set up. And yeah, I'm just leaving I'm just leaving the the restored world thing. Some of you may not appreciate. I apologize. But I don't want to have to rebuild that whole reactor. You're not going to you're not going to be too grumpy that I restored from back up there, right? Cuz I don't want to have to restore. I don't want to have to rebuild that whole reactor. That would be painful for me. If it makes you feel better, pretend I rebuilt it off camera. All right, so what we need now is the induction stuff from mechanism. So we need induction casings. So let's teach you all the things, right? Induction casings, uh, induction ports, which are nice to have. And they're made with induction casings? Yes. And then we're going to want all the way up to ultimate cells and providers. So let's teach all of these bad boys how to be made. Now, I don't know if we have lithium. Do we have lithium yet? Lithium might be in our future. I think we might need to uh, to do that. I think that might be a future dire problem. Give me more patterns, please. Oh, good, we have a bunch. Craft 64 more, please. That would be awesome. Okay. So that's up to there, and then we just need you, and that should be cool. Now, if I put you guys all in here, zoinks, and I wanted one of you, we're missing all the energy cubes and lithium dust. So lithium dust is probably, you know, a thing that's going to have to happen. But we're also going to need this. So basic energy cube, advanced energy cube, elite energy cube and ultimate energy cube now are you just missing lithium dust and a lot of redstone and iron <laughs> and a lot of osmium did we do osmium over here i hope i did i hope i was smart enough to do that have i done osmium over here yet 
I may not have. I don't think I have osmium seeds, do I? I should probably be doing osmium seeds, yeah. Yeah, let's put that on the to-do here. Uh, so you're going to need four Imperium Essence and four Osmium Ingots. And we will get this added to the whole thing. Uh, now we have lots of iron and redstone, so we should be good on that stuff, but we'll see. If it turns out that we don't have enough, I'll deal with it. Probably between episodes. Uh, so Prosperity Seed Base, that looks cool. Beautiful. Osmium Seeds, nice. Uh, and then why don't I get some... 12 a U and maybe Prudentium tier? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Do I have my building gadget handy? There he is. Nice. Where do I want to add this to? Does it matter? Um, I can put it on this one. Does that sound cool? We'll put it on uh, blue and black. And everybody keeps telling me about locking the inputs. What does that do? Just make it so that it matches those? That's kind of neat. But I already have my whole system designed the way I want it to be. So, um, now you guys might need to then be Imperium tier. So let me get another Imperium farmland. Because I might need two of these. Also, people are telling me I can just click the Imperium Essence onto the dirt. I know. I know. Okay, good. So then you can go like that. You should plant now. Excellent. Osmium seeds. And then um, let me get 12 more of you. And then it'll be just coming off the two Imperiums. Let me also add you to the, to the thing. Oh, right. Underwater bad. Really, really need a jetpack version that handles the underwateriness. Let me get those seeds back real quick. Thank you. Okay. One. One. Cool. And then you should plant it. Good. And then I want vertical column. One, two. Perfect. All right. And then just a little bit of health from a growth acceleration. Awesome. And I might wind up throwing... Uh, the tier 2 growth accelerators under the osmium, because I feel like we're probably going to need a little bit of a catch-up. Uh, but let's get them added to the this thing real quick. Boom. So now osmium essence can go in there. Should make everybody nice and happy. And hey, look, we got lucky. Our first, our first seed turned into a second. That's awesome. Yeah, let me get 24 of you. We're going to do that for these, because I, I feel like we have a little bit of catch-up work to do. I feel like we're going to need a lot of osmium. So that would be this one and this one, right? I believe that is correct. Yep, that is correct. Sweet. All right, cool. Let's wrap up the episode here. I'll come back next time. Uh, we'll be ready to do some stuff. What I think I should do is teach this guy how to turn iron essence into iron and redstone essence into redstone because I know we're going to need a lot of it. So it doesn't hurt to have you automatically crafting. And you guys aren't anywhere near full, right? 
Because I think I put a lot of storage upgrades in you. Yeah, you've got... You're fine. Yeah, Inferium stores 130 stacks, and we have, you know, we have 15 and 76. So we're good on iron. We might need a little help with redstone, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. Cool? All right, wrapping up point for the episode. Devil 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.